Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we are going to be talking about uh, just a little scenario here, and it's, you know, what can the Democrats do in their best case scenario in the 2022 Senate elections, you know, uh, which races can they win that they're probably not going to win, but you know, they have a chance, and so I'll be talking about that, and um, just kind of go through this quickly, so first, first uh, seats that would be safe in this best case scenario for the Democratic Party, I think that they'd uh, probably, they'd probably hold all these seats by a safe margin. Um, they'd hold New Hampshire by a safe margin. This is assuming that Chris Nunu doesn't run, and that Maggie Hassan just runs for re-election against a, a no-name like Don Bulldog, who's the only declared Republican. So, I, I think it's probably going to, if Sununu runs, it's this, we're looking at a lean, to, a lean to likely Republican race. If he does not run, it's probably likely Democratic, so we're going to have to see. As of right now, he's not running, but that could change. Um, so, yeah, New York would also be safe. Uh, so, yeah, 45 safe de- Oh, in Colorado, too. I, I, I always forget about Colorado. Uh, 46 safe Democratic seats. Uh, but the Republicans, they'd still probably hold some of, these, uh, some of these seats safe. They'd hold Idaho safe. They'd hold, I mean, being, being completely honest here, I... I think that North Dakota would be safe, even if Heidi Heitkamp did run. She'd probably lose by 13 or 14. She lost by, I think, 10 when she ran for re-election in 2018. That was a blue wave. She was the incumbent. She'd probably lose by a little more in 2022. Uh, Kansas, I mean, hypothetically speaking, if Laura Kelly did run, uh, then th this race could be a lot more competitive, but she's the governor. And she's not going to run. She's going to run for a second term as governor. Oklahoma's safe. Uh, all these states are safe. South Carolina would actually not be safe in a best-case scenario for the Republican Party. Also, the Democrats will hold on to uh, John Ossie in Georgia that's still there. Um, so, yeah. And now, for the likely Democratic seats, they'd hold Nevada and Arizona uh, likely margins. I think, you know, interestingly enough, Catherine Cortez Masto, for whatever reason, has, uh, well, I think she's Hispanic, because so that's part of the, uh, I guess, the reason. Uh, she did, in 2016, she won her Senate race. That was Harry Reid's seat. It was an open seat. It was a potential pickup for Republicans. She did very well in Clark County, and even though she walked in and she actually lost to Bellwether County, which is Washoe, which encompasses Reno and surrounding areas, plus some more Republican areas in the north. But she lost every she lost every county except for Clark, and because she did so well in Clark, she was able to uh, hold the seat for Democrats. And I think she, in, a, in the best case scenario, she'd flip uh, Washoe, and she would uh, manage to hold on to uh, this seat. Now Arizona, I think, would also stay uh, stay with the Democratic Party. I mean. Uh, I I say this mostly because I think Mark Kelly is popular enough that he can has a high enough ceiling to win this race by seven or eight percent in the best case scenario for Democrats, especially if the Republicans end up running someone who is very right wing. Win you know Arizona is very moderate state, and Kelly is a pretty moderate Democrat, so I think he'd hold in Arizona. Uh, the Democrats would also carry uh, Pennsylvania by a likely margin, which would give them the majority, assuming you know obviously Biden's or they'll have a Democratic president. Until 2020, or until at least January of 2025, potentially longer. But uh, yeah, so I think John Fetterman, the scandals we're going to have to see. I mean, like, there's a lot of stuff coming out uh, that, you know, he held a gun to a black man's uh, or head or something, or that, you know, he was when he was the mayor of a city, or uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the city or the gentleman saying that he did, uh, you know, was threatening. Uh, so that, that that could have sank him. Also, it's, it's, uh, uh, Connor Lamb is probably going to run for the Senate. See, Connor Lamb is, is the popular representative from, I think, the 17th district of Pennsylvania, which is Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. So he's pretty popular. He won a special election in 2017. Uh, so I think that uh, Lamb is probably the better candidate, but we're going to have to see. So I think that uh, is the Democrats in Pennsylvania are, are going probably going to flip this seat. If I had to be honest, I think they're going to flip it no matter who they run. But if they run Connor Lamb and he, and he does well enough, he can win the seat by... A bigger margin than expected. Uh, I think Wisconsin. We could see a similar thing in, in Wisconsin. Now, Wisconsin is 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 going to be closer than Pennsylvania. I think no matter who wins it, uh, but Wisconsin is a Republican held seat. Ron Johnson's probably going to free election. But the thing is, he's not very popular because he's very partisan. He's very establishment Republican, and they don't like that because you know he. he First of all, Wisconsin is a popular state, and he was against the $2,000 uh, stimulus payments, so I think that's going to hurt him uh, no matter who he runs against. You know, the Democrats are kind of lacking candidates, but either way, they're probably going to nominate a decent candidate. I mean, I don't really know much about 
Tom Nelson, who's the only declared Democrat. But I think the Wisconsin could absolutely flip. It's obviously a very competitive state. And um, yeah, uh, so I think that's it for our likely D states. For our likely Republican states, just Utah, you know, if the Trump base doesn't come out and the Mormon vote is a little weaker for the Republicans than you'd expect, I think it could be likely, but that's essentially it. And then uh, I think South Dakota could be likely in a best case scenario for Republicans. This is because, you know, if uh, John Thune gets primaried and he loses to someone who's more unpopular than he is, it could get interesting, especially if Billy Sutton runs for the Democrats. Sutton, he came within four points of winning the, uh, the 2018 gubernatorial election. That wasn't a blue wave year, but I do think that he's a good candidate because of his populist rhetoric for the Democrats. He's, he's like the only one who actually would have a chance at flipping the seat. So I think that in a best case scenario for Democrats, South Dakota would narrow up, but I don't think they'd flip it. Uh, they all Seth Carolina would at this point be likely Republican. Uh, Jamie Harrison's not going to run for the seat, so it, I don't really know who they're going to run. Um, I mean, being realistic, uh, Lindsey Graham is much less popular, I guess, than um, Rick than Tim Scott is right now. Scott has black appeal because he is a a, a black Republican, and you know. I guess those are getting more and more rare because of how polarized the country is. So I think that South Carolina would stay uh, Republican. I also forgot to label Kentucky and Indiana as likely Republican states in this best case scenario. I think Kentucky w would be likely, you know, if the Democrats ran Rocky Adkins or something. Or it could even be, you know, it could even be lean, but uh, just so I mentioned that. And then, for, actually, I'll put it as safe because I don't think that Rocky Adkins is even run. Uh, but I, I think that Indiana uh, could narrow up if the Democrats run Evan by. He'd still probably lose to Todd Young, who who, who might actually get primaried by a more Trumpian type candidate. But um, just thought I'd bring that up. I, I also forgot to fill in Georgia uh, for Raphael Warnock as likely Democrat in the best case scenario for them. I mean, obviously, if, if Marjorie Taylor Greene runs for the Republican Party, uh, it could get a, a lot more, I guess, lopsided in, in Warnock's favor. But I still... Uh, don't expect, I wouldn't expect her to run. I mean, there are a lot of people who thought she was going to run because like, she kind of teased an announcement. But uh, right now, I'd say that she's not going to run. But if she does, it's significantly uh, favoring Warnock more. Now, for the lean Democratic states, they probably went Iowa lean. Now, Iowa is interesting. People underrate this, but the Democratic Attorney General there, he won the 2018 Attorney General election with 73% of the vote. And I know he ran unopposed, but he's a behemoth. He's been serving... Iowa as their attorney general for a very long time. He, he for whatever reason he's very well liked. I don't know why, but a lot of like he won every single county, uh, and you know, I think that if he does run for senate, which which would be an underrated move, people aren't really talking about him. But uh, it'd be interesting to see, especially if Grassley or Tyrus, he might run for senate. So we'll have to see that. But I think in the best case scenario for Democrats, they win Iowa. They'd narrowly flip the state. Uh, Ohio is another one that they narrowly, you know, if. Jim Jordan says he's not going to run for that seat, but we're going to have to see who comes out of the Republican primary. Like, like if they run someone like Jim Renacci, who got demolished by Sherrod Brown in 2018, and that's in a race and is pro free trade, which the you know the white working class doesn't like, and and they and the Democrats do indeed run Tim Ryan, which most expect them to. I think that they uh, will be able to uh, flip Ohio in a best case scenario, absolutely. Um, and then I think North Carolina is another one that we should mention here, mostly because of the fact that North Carolina. Obviously, it was, it was one of the closer states in the 2020 election. I think it was, uh, um, I believe it was the fourth closest state in this election, maybe fifth, I think it was the fifth closest state, actually, uh, but behind Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia. Uh, but yeah, it, it was very close. The The Biden campaign didn't really spend a ton of time here. They kind of focused on the Rust Belt as well as Arizona, Georgia, and Florida, but for whatever reason, they kind of neglected North Carolina. I think it was because the early vote data didn't look as good as it could have been for them, and they kind of gave up on it. Um, but I think North Carolina could absolutely flip. Cal Cunningham was a horrible candidate for them in 2020, and he lost by under 2%, which I thought was interesting. Uh, so, yeah. and So I do think that North Carolina could absolutely flip to the Democrats in their best-case scenario, uh, but, yeah. Um, now, for the Republicans, they probably hold Alaska narrowly by, like, 3 or 4% in their best-case scenario, uh, mostly because they... Todd or Todd Young, Lisa Murkowski is not super well liked among. She's actually not very well liked to begin with, uh, with Trump supporters. The Democrats, you know, like if the Democrats, Libertarians, and Independents rally behind one candidate, who they really seem to like, and you know the Republicans or it's like some pro-Trump candidate runs the third-party campaign, and it's just Murkowski, some Republican against a 
more uh, Democrats who are united against or what they won't it could get interesting, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think that whoever comes out of the Republican primary is going to just hold the seat no matter what. So I think that, you know, we'll have to see, but, but in the, but in this best case scenario for Democrats, I'm going to put it as lean or as lean Republican. So, so the last three states or the last two states are, are going to be tilted D uh, first Missouri, then Florida. We'll talk about Missouri. So I think Missouri would uh, be tilted. Obviously, this is not a Democratic trending state. It's a Republican trending state, especially the su- like the southeast part of the state is is is, is getting super Republican. This was once a competitive area. It, it's not like like solid Trump. Like I mean, Trump won a lot of these counties by sixty percent that Al Gore and Bill Clinton carried. Uh, so yeah, and I think that uh, I think that Jason Kander is really the only candidate who could flip it for the Democrats. I mean, Claire McCaskill. There was rumor that she might run for governor. She's not going to. So, yeah. But I think that, um, I think that Candor could flip it if Blunt gets a primary challenge and wins, because Blunt is not super pro Trump. He obviously he votes with Trump the majority of the time, but he's not super pro Trump, and I think that that could hurt him in Missouri. So I think that he would uh, narrowly end up uh, losing if Candor runs a good enough campaign to win. So the last state that we have. Uh, it is Florida, and I think Florida would uh, probably narrowly, narrowly go to the Democrats. It would be the closest of these races because Marco Rubio has appealed to essentially all groups except for, I guess, uh, diehard Democrats who are going to vote against him no matter what. But you know, really, he has Hispanic appeal. He, you know, there's been talk about him winning Miami Dade County. I, I don't think he's going to. I think he'd probably lose it by similar to Trump lost it by. But you know, the fact that we're talking about like a safe Democratic county being winnable for a Republican is interesting. So I think he's going to win. He's in a very strong position to win re-election. I, I made an election night video for him uh, a few days ago that was posted to my channel. But uh, I think in a best-case scenario, the Democrats would kind of get the uh, old Obama coalition to rally against Romney and just narrowly flip the state for, uh, for who they run. You know, whether it be De- uh, Gwen Graham, De- uh, Charlie Crist, who's probably the best candidate, Debbie Mercosil Powell, you know, no matter who they run, I think that it could potentially flip. So this is my final map. F- uh, uh, not my final prediction, just the best case scenario for Democrats. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.